Hey everyone, and welcome to the Grow Hemp series. Today, we'll be making a hermaphrodite plant with silver thiosulfate solution. This is going to be a quick video as this was part of a series of test grows to try out silver thiosulfate solution in different scenarios. And we're starting with a clone that I'm going to be flowering really quickly since this is a test grow. But I still have to give it a little time to establish first in the new environment. And to help the plant grow a little faster, I'll be leaving it under 24 hours of constant light per day to start. Now, five days before switching the plant to flower, I'll spray the plant down with silver thiosulfate solution for the first time, drenching the plant right after the lights go dark. I'm repeating this process every week, and I'll do this until the pollen sacs have started to mature. And of course, this means that I've stopped running the lights 24-7 and for the final 5 days before switching the flower, adopted a 18 and 6 hour light cycle instead. Because I don't want to apply the silver thal sulfate solution while the lights are on, since when combined with the intensity of the grow lights, the STS solution has a higher chance to burn the leaves. As for the setup the plant is grown in, there's a couple of unique things going on here, so I'll go over each piece. First of all, as you might have noticed, the plant looks like it's housed in one of those reusable bags, and that's because it is. I'm out of fabric pots, and I have a lot of these lying around from random places, so I got to thinking that as long as these aren't coated with some waterproofing material, wouldn't they just work as well as fabric pots? I mean, as long as there's some kind of fabric, they should be able to provide aeration, protect from overwatering, and can air prune the roots, right? And it turns out I was right. Although it's still a little harder to grow in these, just because the base of the bag isn't as large as a typical fabric pot. Overall though, I do highly recommend using these types of reusable fabric bags to grow your plants in if you don't have any fabric pots, as it provides pretty much all of the same benefits that a fabric pot provides. Next. Most of this grow setup is a bundled all-in-one grow kit from Mars Hydro. So the 2x2 grow tent, TS600 LED grow light, hygrometer and thermometer reader, and the carbon filter all came with this kit. With the only thing that I swapped out being the inline exhaust fan, since the one I have is slightly more quiet and efficient. Overall though, for anyone looking to start a grow from scratch and don't know where to start, these all-in-one kits are a great and affordable way to learn indoor growing without having to do a lot of research on the individual parts needed to build an indoor grow setup. I also forgot to mention that I'm starting the grow with a Fox Farm Ocean Forest potting mix, which has enough built-in nutrients to last the plant all the way until now. And with the leaves starting to show signs of a nutrient deficiency, I'll start to feed the plant a bloom fertilizer for the rest of the grow each time I water. But yeah, the plant is developing 
really well now in the middle of the flowering stage. And when working with either colloidal silver or silver thiosulfate solution, I've been noticing that the top of the main stem will have a good mix of female flowers and male stamen peppered in between them, while the rest of the lower stems will generally only have mostly pollen sacs. Male stamen, by the way, are the sort of banana shaped looking things you see here. And they're essentially the same thing as a male pollen sac without the outer protective shell. Let's give this a little more time to mature before we do a check for pollen. The pollen sacs have started to open for a while now, so now is a good time to check to see how we did. And here you can see that the pollen sacs have pollen in them. So this was a successful test for producing pollen to make feminized seeds with. I also did do a few other grows alongside this one testing different application times with the use of silver thiosulfate solution. And I'm not looking to post all of these grow logs since they're pretty redundant. So the gist of it is that silver thiosulfate solution is pretty forgiving. And as long as you generally apply it when the plant switches to the flowering cycle and then repeat it like every week or so until the pollen sacs have started to appear, you should be okay. And that's it. Like the content? Then be sure to check out our beginner's guide to creating CBD products from scratch. Available at Amazon in print and digital with links in the description below. You can also find us at hempinapot.com. Dot com.